Hi, it's Aaron from Hello Space Explorers. And Aaron, uh, hopefully soon to be from <laughs> Inner Space Explorers. <laughs> exactly. So that's probably a good, uh, good point to introduce Aaron a little bit. Uh, as you probably have noticed, we work together on the other project, American Runabouts. And as Aaron is an experienced diver with a military background in diving, he will also be an integral part of Inner Space Explorers in the near future and is working on his instructorship. And obviously it's always more fun to do these things together than standing there in front of the camera alone. So we do some of these videos together and today actually is a real reason for that because we got an email from one of my patrons who said that he was used to dive warm water, like classical vacation diving thing, and now moved to the UK and started diving cold water and he asked if he could make a video about this transition from warm vacation only diving to more serious cold water diving and what comes along with that and I think specifically the question was about the dry suit and not feeling too comfortable in it also he did a dry suit certification and I think that we actually start certification does not necessarily mean training does not necessarily mean comfort and um, the reason I said that this is a good uh, reason to bring you in is that Aaron originally is from Australia. Yeah. And this is exactly what it was. You were yeah, so the water and then I kicked you in the water. <laughs> so a little bit about my background. So uh, it was all military diving. Um, and through that, so I did my training in Sydney and then the rest of my diving was all in the Northern Territory in Darwin, which is very tropical, very warm water. So most of my dives, it was, at most it was a thin wetsuit. Generally though, we were just in shorts and maybe a shirt or something like that, um, wearing our gear. So water was very warm, was very comfortable. Uh, and then moving over here and meeting Akim and uh, yeah, <laughs> completely. And so uh, my first ever dive on, which was on Stamberger Sea, one of the lakes here near Munich, and it was winter and it was cold. Of course. And so I remember, <laughs> I remember we got there and you'd asked me previously whether I had dry suit experience, which I said, yeah, I have dry suit experience. <laughs> because we had done one or two dives in dry suits and gotten ticked off and had the proficiency and, and got that skill. Um, however, <laughs> I then realized that that by no means meant that I actually knew how to dive a dry suit. Yeah. And so I remember that first dive in the water and I, I was just so focused on just trying not to do anything stupid in front of you <laughs> that I didn't really probably notice the cold too much until I got out of the water. Yeah, uh, I can remember that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was a funny one. Yeah. So actually that's, that's probably the key point. I mean, obviously there's three things in this cold water diving. First is the cold itself. So you need to go to more or to, to better isolation, which usually means dry suit. And along with the dry suit comes a lot of different things. Number one for sure is getting a dry suit that really fits. I see so many people in dry suits that simply don't fit because everybody has this thing in his head. I go to a dive shop, I get this thing off the shelf and I go home. And in fact, I think at least 70% of all people should get a made to measure dry suit or at least a partially made to measure dry suit, like the, the top fits, but at least the feet, the, the length of the legs, and there's a few things. So I can normally, I'm somewhere between large and X large, um, and I can buy my normal clothes pretty easily off the shelf but all my dry suits are all made to measure because everything else just sucks. And the reason that is, is that if this thing's too baggy, too big, not properly fitting, it creates a lot of issues, especially if it's too big, which a lot of people do because they think it's more comfortable, it's probably more warm, but then you have, and that in combination with the way people get trained, like to compensate or to control their buoyancy through the dry suit, means that there's a lot of air in this huge suit and then flowing back and forth and creating all sorts of issues because it's way harder to control and if it's too small it actually it's not really warm because you don't get proper undergarment under it yeah. 
Plus, you cannot move really freely anymore. This especially like a wetsuit is a bit stretchy because of the neoprene. Now, suddenly, especially diving a dry laminate suit, I mean, if that is too small and you want to reach back and it stops here, it stops you. I mean, suddenly yeah. you feel kind of restricted. So, that's number one. Um, for you, that was not an issue. I mean, if you look at us, we basically we can share our, our stuff. Very cool for me because I don't have any stuff here. <laughs> um, so yeah that, that's probably number one and then yeah. obviously also pick the right undergarment um, so it's really comfortable and warm and then realize where the cold affects you most and that's another thing I see a lot um, that people don't really take care about is you lose most of the heat through your head mm. especially if you have full hair like me um, so I can actually notice that's a good point. I mean, if you've seen my videos, you see that I'm usually very, very short. So if that's like a centimeter or like half a centimeter more hair, it's a dramatic difference if you go outside. Like if I shave my head and I take off five millimeter of hair, I've, if I go out then, you can feel the cold. It's, it's dramatic. So if you picture yourself being submerged in cold water and no proper isolation on your head, this will make you freeze no matter how good the suit is. So get a proper hood, proper fitting hood, and the pulse areas. So dry suit, uh, dry gloves or wet gloves. And if it's dry gloves, for example, I see a lot of people use this seal on seal thing. So you have the latex or silicon seal from the suit, and then you have another seal on the dry glove. So basically, on that part where the um, where the blood flow is, where your pulse is, you only have two layers of silicon or, or latex. And obviously that doesn't isolate. So again, you lose a lot of heat through that. So you can compensate, put a sock underneath or a cut off sleeve from a, from a wetsuit or something like that. Work with little tricks or get a better system. Yeah. I can't remember, did you dive dry gloves? I drove, I drove wet gloves and so that was, <laughs> <laughs> and so that was the dive. And I remember we were in the water and it was, I have been in there for 10, 15 minutes. I remember you asking me whether I was cold and I was like, oh no, no. <laughs> Oh good, let's keep going. And in reality, my, my fingers were so numb. Like my fingers had never been so cold in my life before. And same with my face. Uh, I mean, growing up in Australia, we just don't experience much cold. And so I just remember when we got out of the water and my fingers would I couldn't move them for probably a good 10 minutes and my mouth I couldn't talk properly because my lips were like, oh <laughs> so it was an experience, definitely. Yeah, I wanted to give you the full experience, obviously, <laughs> taking care of it. <laughs> So yeah, the dry suit, that, that's one thing. So that's just technical. Get somebody that really understands what's going on with this and just not wants to sell you one. Um, the next thing is proper training. Of course, it's, it's useful if you find an instructor or a friend or whatever that gives you a good intro to a dry suit. But the major thing that I realize is that most agencies teach you like use the BCD on the surface, but once you submerge, you use the dry suit for buoyancy control. And that is simply wrong. Full stop. End of story. So the dry suit is simply there to keep you dry and warm, which means there's enough air in it that you don't get any, um, any squeeze marks from it like being vacuumized. And that means you're warm. That's it. So like in the 40 meter range, we use these 0 0.6 liter bottles, the small ones, like the argon bottles, there's no argon in it. Um, so I'll put a picture in here. And um, so that's enough for one or two dives in the 40 meter range. It's just to compensate for the water pressure. That's it. So you do not compensate your um, your buoyancy that you do with your wing or your BCD, nothing else. Yeah. So I realized that a lot of the training comes from the idea that you don't want the diver to control two buoyancy devices at the same time. Yeah. But hey, it's a training. It's a training thing. Nothing else. So get used to it, and you gain so much more comfort by doing this in, in an appropriate way. Um, that the additional task is not the big issue, especially if you have just a little bit of gas in your suit, enough to keep you warm and comfortable. It's not such a big thing. And again, if it's the fitting dry suit and the valve is on the correct position somewhere here on the outside, I mean, when I'm in the water, I just do this 
and that's all I do. It's not like I have to do some fancy yeah. acrobatics to get the air of my suit. But of course, if this thing fits you like a like a bag, and the uh, the the outlet's somewhere here, and you suddenly have to make some <laughs> weird maneuvers and yeah. get yourself out of trim, that again brings a yeah. tale of of other things that are connected to this problem. So it's, it's all tied together, so yeah, no, 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 training. I know for me, like in, in the training that we got on dry suits, and so that was actually when we were diving SSBA, so surface supply. Yeah. So that was our buoyancy control. And so we got, we got taught to use it as buoyancy control because that's all that we had, had on us down there. And so- Where was I, your outlet valve? On the arm or on the, on the chest? It was on the arm. Oh. And so uh, just from learning it that way, so then when we're actually doing a normal dive on scuba, and I'm in the dry suit, and so I'm then like, okay, well, do we, what do I use for buoyancy? Do I? And, and so then I pretty much just watch Arkham and see what he does. <laughs> oh, okay, I'll follow that. But things like that, I mean, really, I should have just asked. And Australian military, he obviously <laughs> didn't get any training before. We just wanted to see what if he can survive or not. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a six meter dive or something. Like that. Yeah, nothing much. Um, yeah, the other factor that clearly comes into play is that usually diving colder water is less visibility and the more darker greenish water which i think for a lot of people it's a psychological yeah it's a psychological yeah. thing it's, it's way different if you jump in there you have four meters of visibility yeah clear blue water, blue water there's lots of fish or yeah. other divers in the water that you can see and or it gets dark like at 10 meters or something like that yeah. i realize that a lot that people get issues with this dark thing so yeah. i can remember we had quite a few divers um when we did a lot of wreck diving in the baltic sea where you have this in the, in, i mean very drastically this dark green water and, and not a lot of light so you do a 30 meter wreck dive it feels like you're i don't know 50 60 in the mediterranean or something like yeah. that and even probably more dark yeah. and this greenish water and a lot of people create issues with that and the only thing you can do is dive with somebody experienced and and build up your your uh, your comfort level so yeah. the main thing is don't let yourself be forced into some some dives where you don't where you don't feel good, take yeah. it slowly yeah. and take it to somebody who's able to accept that. Yeah. That's the main thing because this group pressure can be a real killer. Yeah. I think what, what I've found for myself anyway is it's always nice to maybe push yourself slightly out of your comfort zone, but there's there's a limit. You know, you never you never want to put yourself in a position where you're being unsafe or or where you're really uncomfortable, but you do want to slowly, you know, just push yourself a little bit more, a little bit more and just get that confidence that way. And have somebody with you who knows that you push beyond your comfort zone yeah. or that you, that you try to extend yeah. it a little bit and, uh, and not somebody who thinks you're completely fine. Yeah. Which that I think really that's cool. always nice for me because I'm generally, I'm generally diving with you or someone quite experienced when I'm over here. Um, so, so that does make it a little bit easier for me, but yeah, I completely agree with that. Yeah. Another important point from my experience is make sure that you do not suffer before and after the dive, diving cold water, which means if you go with somebody, for example, I had a dive partner for, for a while and it took him always an eternity to set up his gear. So I, I went there, get my gear together, get my suit and I'm ready. And then it was 40 minutes till this guy was finally able to go in the water. So then you need to adjust to that. Then stay in the car or somewhere inside cold before you enter the water. In the water, you're not going to warm up again. And the same goes the other way around. If you come out and then you're standing there in snow or rain or just windy, cold weather, and then you suffer, I mean, it takes the fun out of it. it just doesn't make any sense. So for example, uh, here for the, for the boat business, we have a big Mercedes Sprinter as the company car. It's an awesome diving vehicle. Yeah. It has a heating that runs even if the car's off. So you can set the timer, you go for the dive, and you say, okay, in half an hour, the heating should go on. You come out, you walk in this thing, you, you can stand inside there, and it's nice and cozy and warm. So you take your stuff off, you can dry yourself. It doesn't matter if it's, there's a hailstorm outside. That's perfect. You're nice and comfortable. So that doesn't mean you have to buy yourself some big van or something, but probably a dive partner has something, or just make sure that at least organize yourself in a way that you get out of the cold as fast as possible, have something warm to drink, some yeah, soup or whatever, warm, yeah. and make sure that, that you, yeah, that you're comfortable soon or go to a restaurant afterwards and have 
so ein proper Meal oder at least some hot soup or something. Yeah, hot tea or just have a chill bit of a dive. Yeah. yeah. That for me was always a main factor um, yeah. when, um, when I did a lot of cold water diving. Yeah, definitely. And I, for, for me, just being very new to it, I find that that is very essential, especially when getting out to get that warmth yeah. back quickly. Um, most, most certainly. Yeah. So, yeah, anything else? Um, so, summary. Get a proper dry suit, a good fitting dry suit. Get proper training on it. I think just preferably through IZ. I think just touching on the on the training thing again. I mean, like we kind of brushed on before, but just because you get qualified doesn't mean that you're confident. And if you're not confident, realize that in yourself, acknowledge it, and then address it. You know, go out there and get better at it. Get better at it. Get more comfortable at it. Find someone who's good at it who can help you. I think that's so important. It's actually a good point. There's so many people um, that I know that are dry suit certified, but you can see that they're afraid of it. Like specifically somebody I have in mind that popped up with a dry suit from a 15, 20 meter dive or something because it couldn't control the buoyancy. And actually the dry suit was way too big. And since that is always afraid of going to the surface, which the person compensates by taking too much weight. Mm. And uh, so the entire thing is just screwed up the complete system, yeah. and the person never have fun diving dry suits. Yeah, and, and also it's a shame. If you learn that way, and then you never address it or anything, then you just continue to think yeah. that that's the way that you're meant to be diving, and you never really realize the, the proper way of doing it, which is yeah. so much easier. Yeah. yeah, training dry suit training comfort, um, and slowly build your confidence with the psychological things like just deep, practice cold. yeah practice and practice practice find somebody that is natural in that environment and is happy to take you along yeah and doesn't force you into into areas where you're not comfortable yet yeah diving in cold water is a cool experience you know it's, it's, yeah. it's, something, yeah, it's, it's something really good if you've never done it before i highly recommend it it's it really is an experience and it's it's really there's some beautiful things in some very cold places so absolutely when you think about it, the, the, the the guy that wrote us is from from the uk tons of cool wrecks around the island yeah. and i'm absolutely worthless and i know this because <laughs> spent quite a bit of water in front of the uk <laughs> um yeah i hope that that answers the question and probably holds some some tips and tricks um for some of you and uh Actually, that's a, that's a nice transition to the new video series that we're gonna gonna do. I said this before, but we will put up another playlist on this channel specifically on recreational topics uh, because I realized there's a lot of people asking about that, and I didn't really want to mix it up with the more technical stuff that we normally do. Yeah. But as we have an, um, a training program for beginners, that's probably a good good thing to start with this. All right. I hope you liked that. If so, please give us a thumbs up. If you have not subscribed to the channel yet, please consider doing so. And if you subscribe, hit that little bell so you get notification when we put up new content. If you want to discuss things more in detail, so check out the Patreon site. There's a little bit more content than here and a bit more private uh, conversation going on. And yeah, stay safe, dry and warm, and I'll see you in the next video. Catch you guys.